Does this look familiar? I can't tell you how many times I've seen this problem and variations on this kind of problem. X plus 1 over X is A. We're given something like this, A maybe 1 or some other number. And we're supposed to find some power like this, some powers of X. X power 7 plus 1 over X power 7 or X power 9 plus 1 over X power 9. What is that given this? I, I see this at least once a week, <laughs> maybe several times a week. I see it in math groups on Facebook. I see it on YouTube. I see it everywhere. <laughs> so it's a really popular problem. There's many variations on it. And what I want to do today is develop a theory for solving this kind of thing. So we'll look at the more general case where uh, we're given x plus 1 over x is a, find x power k plus 1 over x power k. And it's actually very beautiful, the uh, techniques for solving this. Let's start by multiplying x power m plus 1 over x power m times x power n plus 1 over x power n. What does this give us? All right, I expanded it. I didn't do anything clever. I just multiplied everything out and I got this. Now let me regroup this. I take this term and I take this term, put them together like this, and now I collect the other two terms, x minus n plus. This I can write as a reciprocal m minus n. So I got the same thing now, top and bottom, same power. Terms like this and like this, they are uh, difficult to write over and over and over again. So let me introduce some notation. I'll call AP is a combination like this, x power P plus 1 over x power P. Okay, so I'll shorten it to AP. So I end up with this formula here. AM times AN is... What do I have here? M plus N, A, M plus N. And here is M minus N, A, M minus N. That's very nice. Okay, well, I've uh, simplified things down to this beautiful formula. Now let me rearrange this uh, a little bit. Let's take this piece here on the left. So I have A, M plus N is equal to am times an minus am minus n. Okay, I'll put a box around this. This is the main idea. So what's going on here? Well, this is a recursion. What I've done here is broken up the problem, a big problem, into little problems. So this is the key idea. On the left, we have a big computation, m n plus n, so that's a lot of high powers, but here on the right, I have smaller, see, these are all smaller, m, n, m minus n, these are smaller computations. So what I have is a recursion where I'm decomposing a big complicated thing here into something smaller, or you can think of it as divide and conquer. Now to properly solve a recursion, just like when you solve differential equation, you need some initial conditions. So what initial conditions can we find? Well, a zero is easy. That's x power zero plus one over x power zero, and that's one plus one, and that's two. What about the next one, a one? That's x power one plus one over x power one. But we're given that. We're told that this is a. So I know those two. Uh, so I'm doing very well. I have my recursion law of recursion and my initial conditions. So here we go. This is it. That's sufficient to solve any such problem, I think. And uh, we have some other equations we can derive which can help us calculate things, some special cases. So here are some handy formulas for special cases. A m plus 1. Well, this is useful. So, for example, if I know A5, I can find A6 from this. Watch. So, I plug in n is 1, and I get a m 
a n is a little a so this is a a m minus a m minus one okay so that's a special formula when n is one that comes in handy well, there's another one we can derive uh, when n is m so we have a m plus m we'll plug it in here that's a 2m uh, equals um, a m times a m so that's a m squared and here I have a zero so that's minus a zero here over here okay so I end up with a 2m is a m squared minus 2 because a zero is 2 all right so I have this special case here and another special case which is very handy here if I if I have for example a problem where I need to find a a6 well I can break that down into uh, a3 minus 2 so th then it's a question of finding a3 you see so I break it down into smaller and smaller pieces this way very very cool now let's apply the theory that we developed to this problem. We're given x plus 1 over x is a, and we're going to find this x power 7 plus 1 over x power 7, and, and also x power 9 plus 1 over x power 9. Why not do two of them? All right, let me write down what uh, I have discovered previously. This is our main recursion law, this special formula here. It drops the power down by 1, which can be very handy. And this one here drops the power down by a factor of a half. So if you uh, are given some big thing to compute, like, uh, you know, instead of 9, it's uh, 24. Well, if you use this formula, you've already decreased it to a power 12 case, right? So it's a very useful formula. And of course, let us not forget the initial conditions A0 and A1. So the first thing I'm going to do is find A7 here. All right, right away I can apply this one, A2M, to get A2. Uh, that's really easy. And I know A1 from the initial condition. So that's A squared minus 2. Now to find A3, which of these formulas up here should I use to find a3? I think I'm going to use this one here. Okay, so a3, that's a2 plus 1. And okay, I put uh, 2 for m. And I have a, a2 minus, 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, this, this is good. I know a2 because I have it here. And so this is easy to figure out. I'll do the algebra and write the answer here. That's a cubed minus 3a. Very good. Now let's calculate a4. I can calculate a4 from a2 by using uh, this uh, doubling formula here. here. Here we go. It's a simple uh, a2 squared minus 2. I apply the doubling formula. And I'll do all the algebra. And I get this. Very, very good. And you say, well, how am I going to get a7? I'm looking for a7, but that's easy to do, easy enough. a7, this is a3 plus 4, yeah? So I have m and n here. Well, actually, I could put it the 4 first, 4 plus 3 like this. I want to write it this way to avoid a negative number here, which I don't know how to handle. Well, actually, if you give it some thought, you do know how to handle it, but I'll let you think about that. So I put that in here, and um, A1, well, I know A1. That's the initial condition that I know, and I know A4, and I know A3, so I can do the entire algebra. And I get this formidable-looking polynomial here, and that's my answer. A power 7 minus 7A5 seven plus 14A cubed minus 7A. And we are done with that one. And what is the other one we're supposed to be doing? Well, that's over here. That's A9. What is A9? That's our next task. What should we do? Well, we can, we can do this. There's more than one way to do it. I'm going to do it the following way. A8 is, uh, is A2 times 4. So I can apply the doubling formula so that's a4 squared minus 2, yes? And what does that give me? 
Well, I don't need to quite expand it all out just yet. Okay, let me calculate A9. A9 is A8 plus 1, and I can use this step by one formula here now. I get this. Oh, very good. All right, now I happen to know A7, and I know A8 over here, so I can plug all this stuff in. Well, I know A4 and I know A7, so I can do all this algebra. Should be no problem. I want you to try it. I'll just give you the answer now. And there we go. We have A9. So we solved both of them. We have great expressions for both of these things. Turns out the answer is these complicated polynomials. But it was fun to derive them. Now let me show you a different idea. The recursion method is good for just about any case. So any value of a and any powers can be handled by the recursion method. But sometimes for certain values of, of a over 2, you can use complex numbers. And that's when um, a over 2 is a value, an exact value of cos theta. So there's some theta that you can easily find that gives you this uh, A2 when you apply cos to it. For example, uh, you know, something like this. A is root 3, then it's easy to solve for cos theta is uh, root 3 over 2. Okay, so in this case, the complex numbers method is going to work. So it works for certain values of A. But when it works, it works really, really well. So let's try a problem. We're given x plus 1 over x equals 1. And like before, we want to find these combinations, x power 7 plus 1 over x power 7 and x power 9 plus 1 over x power 9. It turns out it's much easier to do this with complex numbers because this is this here is a special case. Okay, let's start by making this substitution. x is e to the i theta. And I get e to the i theta plus 1 over e to the i theta. And this is e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta, like that. Now divide both sides by 2. I get e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta over 2 is, okay, from the 1 here, 1 half. All right, this is cos theta equals 1 half. And you see what I was telling you before, special value. It's easy to find theta now. So here's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and cos 60 is 1 over uh, 1 half, so there we go. So theta is equal to 60 degrees. And in terms of radians, that's pi over 3. So I have figured out what x is. So x is in fact e to the i pi over 3, and now I can compute these combinations x power 7 plus 1 over x power 7. Let's divide this by 2 for now. I get this, and let's bring the powers inside. Okay, 7 pi over 3, but that's just, oh, not 3, 2. Okay, that's just uh, cos 7 pi over 3. But cos 7 pi over 3, if I work that out, that's just 1 half. Okay, now I multiply both sides by 2. And I get x power 7 plus 1 over x power 7 is 1. And there's my answer for the first part. Very beautiful technique. How about we try it using uh, recursion? A7, what's that? Well, it was this big polynomial. And now I um, put a is 1 in here. And I end up with a7 is 1. Exactly like this. So both work, just that the complex numbers method works really fast in some special cases. All right, let me give you some exercises here. You do the case of x power 9 plus 1 over x power 9. I think up here I asked it uh, to do that, but I want you to do it. So do it both ways. And while we're at it, let me give you a couple more. So here's another one, uh, x plus 1 over x is root 3. You find the following. And try to do it both ways, by complex numbers and by recursion. I think it's amenable to complex numbers. 
and let me know what you get. I think this technique is truly awesome. The recursion stuff is really amazing. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I, I know you've seen this problem before, and maybe some of you thought that uh, there's no real theory behind it. I just got to try whatever algebra comes to my mind and hope for the best or, or whatever. But actually, there is a theory, an organized idea behind all of this, and it's recursion. And in some cases, you can use this clever trick using complex numbers. And, you know, if I put a minus sign here, I'm sure you can see that there are other complex number tricks I can sometimes do. Well, I hope you liked that. And I will see you next time with more great mathematics stuff.